In last week's episode, I covered Soviet hotels. This time, I want to cover something even cooler, and that is Soviet sanatoriums. So you're supposed to change your shoes when you come in, from male size shoes to wind size shoes. And also you must hang your coat up, especially if you're going in the restaurant, not allowed to go in the restaurant with your coat on. So you've got a bit of everything here, by the lake, good old bit of industry there. Stained glass window even. And then the rooms, quite nice, perfectly acceptable. Nothing wrong with these rooms at all. It's clearly been renovated. There's a bathroom. Uh, yeah. So yeah, does the job. So what's the difference exactly between a sanatorium and a hotel? Because they're quite similar in many ways. Essentially, a uh, sanatorium people can come here and have some health treatments. But you don't have to. Um, some people come for that and other people like me and my family just come for the the leisure and recreational aspect but if you want treatments then um, they've got plenty of little rooms here where you can have a whole range of treatments I think they're the most narrow doors I've ever seen so this wooden panel all things from the Soviet period. It's kind of cool, but if you like modern stuff as well, well got something on the opposite wall done quite recently by the looks of it. It's basically canteen style, school dinner style if you like. So let's go through the end of meal procedure, shall we? So probably most of the time the sanatoriums are located kind of in the middle of nowhere because you know they're supposed to be a place you know to get away from the stress of the cities and a place to you know rest and relax so they're not supposed to be in uh, busy towns however there are some like this one that are located in a town albeit a small town and on the edge of town but you see you come out of the sanatorium and already you're in the town now, that's quite useful if you want to have amenities. Because of their remote locations, they can be a little tricky to get to, especially if you don't have your own transport. To get to here, from Yekaterinburg, we had to take a train and two buses. It's kind of cool in a way, because this is just a little town of less than 10,000 people. And if it wasn't for the sanatorium, well then, you know, there's no way I'd ever visit this town. One of the best things about staying in the sanatorium is that it really gives you a motivation to try and lead a healthy life, albeit only for a few days, but you eat healthy food and you're in a good environment, so really you, you feel better both physically and mentally. It encourages you to do things you might not usually do, like get up at 6am and go for a jog. So that's the little town there. Nice quiet little town, which is perfect for relaxation. And then the sanatorium itself is just there at the edge of town. We've got a rather cool pedestrian bridge there, which allows you to get to nature on the other side if you so wish. I think I just disturbed there. Sunday morning lion there. Sorry guys. <laughs> so who 
were the sanatoriums actually for? Well, really, they're for everyone. Sure, I'm not going to lie to you, you know, they're, they are quite popular perhaps with you know, older people. So, I mean, if you're a party animal, well then, you know, staying in a sanatorium is not going to be for you. Um, but you can go as an individual, you can go as a, a couple, or you can absolutely go as a family. Um, I mean, that last one I particularly encourage. The kids absolutely love it. My daughter loves the sanatoriums because they're so spacious. And if there's one thing that all kids love, it's space for them to run around in. And also the kids, they love the attention as well. My little daughter gets so much attention from the grannies and the granddads. And, you know, what kid doesn't love attention? So, you know, if you have got children, especially younger children, maybe not teenagers, that's not cool, uh, sanatorium. Sorry, it's a sanatorium for a teenager. But for young kids, bring them to anyone and they'll absolutely love it. I guarantee you. Do this. this. Do this, yeah? No, ti znaš, ti ljubiš, ti jesu. <laughs> These sanatoriums all have little things like libraries and billiard rooms and, you know, places to play chess and swimming pools. There's plenty of entertainment, really. Most of the sanatoriums have their own swimming pool. And this one's only a little one, but still it's enough for paddling around in. Another cool thing about these sanatoriums is you get to see old school things like this that you just can't find elsewhere. Nice little chess table here. It doesn't look new, but it still does the job. And there's the pieces in there. Sit here, a little view out the window as well. So they've got quite a few of these weird little ornament things around and when I first saw them I thought it was just there for decoration but actually it seems that they're kind of some kind of a lampshade because you can see lights up there. There's usually plenty of artwork on display as well. In recent times the sanatorium has lost or covered up two of its Soviet era mosaics but luckily, they seem to be keeping this big one here on the entrance. They've had a big renovation recently. In fact, it's still going on at the moment, which for most guests is nice. But for me, it's not very good because just there until recently was a huge Soviet mosaic. And in fact, I suspect it's still there somewhere, but they've just put this new sort of wall thing in front of it. So I guess it's still there and then one day it can be uncovered again. So there's another full length wall mosaic there too, but we don't get to see it. They have at least kept the one on the ground floor low, though obviously half of it's covered up. One slight issue is with older people or something, that the ground floor has the treatment rooms and so the bedrooms only start on the uh, second floor. So maybe there are some beds on the ground floor for those that really can't get up the stairs. But I mean, it looks more like for, you know, short term use, just for a few hours, not for night or anything. I've been seeing a lot of sort of not very mobile people struggling or going up the stairs to their rooms. But maybe that's deliberate, you know, to give them a form of exercise and all part of their physiotherapy treatment. A little balcony there, it'd be nice to go out on there and have a little view of the water, but none of the balcony doors open, unfortunately. This is the main foyer, and I mentioned about the renovation going on, and all this stuff here, it looks like a whole pile of new mattresses, is just sitting in the, the main foyer, so it's the first thing that everyone sees when they come in. And somehow the guests, in order to get to the back garden, they have to get through that gap there, despite the fact a lot of them are using walking sticks and simple frames and things like that. So the sanatoriums, I mean, they are good fun, they are interesting, but to be honest, they are far from perfect. But really, I guess we should try to keep things in perspective. The cost, I mean, it's, it's very reasonably priced. I mean, it's about, here is about £40, $50, something like that, per night. Uh, and that includes breakfast, lunch and dinner. 
and that's not per person that's per room so the, the myself my wife and my child were here you know <laughs> 40 pounds a night full board i mean you you can't complain at that can you i think you have to have realistic expectations i mean what do you expect and actually i think it's pretty good value for money